In this video, I'll be doing a detailed solution to the maths question you see on the screen here from the 2024 Cambridge A-Level Mechanics paper, specifically paper 4.1. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, or a different paper entirely, check out the description below for links. And if you find this video or any of the videos on my channel useful and you want to help the channel out, what helps the most is sharing this video, especially if you're in a class group with other people sitting the exam. Also, I do appreciate likes, subscribes, or even a super thanks. In question six, they talk about a particle uh, that's moving in a straight line, um, but it has a velocity given by this equation here, so a lot more complex than we're used to. Uh, they tell us the maximum this number can get to, the V can get to, is 4.5, and they want us to show that, yeah, they want us to show that K is equal to 10. Okay, there's two ways to do this. I'll, I'll do it, well, I'll do it the, the, the most common way first, and then I'll outline, no, I'll pretty much do it the second way as well, uh, using just maths, um, completing the square, just a bit of algebra. Okay, the first way, they said maximum. You should be thinking derivative, uh, dv dt in this case. Uh, that's also acceleration, by the way, but not important for this case. All that's important is, uh, the derivative is equal zero at a maximum or you can think of it acceleration is zero at the maximum at the maximum speed because it's not moving it's not going up anymore so uh, acceleration must be zero and um, so let's find the derivative the derivative of uh, this is is equal let's see a half k uh, t to the minus a half and uh, this becomes just minus two and the minus eight disappears this is the derivative, and we know it equals zero because they talked about a maximum. At the point we're interested in, we know this is equal zero. So we can rearrange this a bit. Uh, we'd get a half k, uh, let's move the t to the bottom row. So a half k, uh, the t to the power of a half on the bottom equals two. Uh, let's, let's multiply both sides by two. Well, let's just do that here. That becomes a four. Uh, let's multiply both sides by t to the power of a half. We get k is equal to four times uh, t to the power of a half. Um, yeah, that's not k is equal to 10. So we need more information here. Um, what I would like to find out is what time is, it, is this maximum happening at? Because they told us what v was. They told us v is 4.5. It'd be nice to know what time it happens at. Um, that's what this tells us. Um, just rearrange it. We would get that uh, a four can come over, k over four is equal to t to a half. Um, square both sides. We get t on this side and we get a square on that side. Uh, so t is equal to k squared over 16. That'll be useful in a moment uh, because we're ignoring the first bit of information they told us. V is equal 4.5. That means k t to the power of a half minus 2t minus 8 is equal 4.5 at the maximum but also at the maximum we know what t is so I can just put t in or I know what t to the power of a half is as well and let me write both of them that's t and uh, t to the, to the half is equal k over 4 um, just a step before that one uh, so if we put that in we get k multiplied by k over 4 minus two times uh, k squared, this is t here, over 16, minus eight equals 4.5. This is just an equation with one unknown. Uh, there's k's, uh, this is k squared, this is k squared. See, two goes into that, uh, eight times. Um, we just do a bit of algebra. k squared over four minus k squared over eight. Use a calculator if you want, but uh, we just need this four to be an eight. So multiply by two and be fair, multiply the top by two. Uh, we get two k squared minus one k squared, that's k squared over eight. Uh, let's move this eight over and we get equals uh, 12.5. Uh, that's k squared is equal, uh, multiply that by eight uh, is 100. And uh, k then is equal to 10. Uh, plus or minus 10, but they did tell us that k was a positive constant, so positive 10, and that's what they told us it was. 
Uh, let me do all that again, uh, but for those who don't like differentiation, they told us phi was uh, 4.5 at the maximum. This might not look it, but this is actually quadratic. Uh, something, and this is this squared. So this is something squared. So we can rewrite this as a quadratic. Uh, minus 2t plus k t to the power of a half minus 8. Um, this is a quadratic. If you want, you can rewrite this as, a, say, an x equals t to the power of a half. That means x squared is equal t. I'm going to go a little fast because I've already done this question. Um, so you could rewrite all of this as minus 2x squared plus kx minus 8. Um, and if we complete the square of this, we'll very easily see what the maximum value of this is. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. We take minus 2 out of everything. x squared, that'll become minus uh, k over 2. x, and that'll become plus uh, 4. And we complete the square of this guy. If you don't know what complete the square is, look it up. It's a very useful maths uh, thing to do, and they can ask you in, um, in paper 3 or... Maybe paper two, maybe paper one, I can't remember. Um, so completing the square, x uh, minus half of this will be the perfect square. So that would be minus k over four. That squared will get us x squared. This squared will get us minus k over two x. Uh, the problem is it will also get us a k squared over 16. So to balance that out, I don't want that guy. I don't want a k squared over 16, it's not up here. So to balance that out, I'll uh, take it away. K squared over 16, and there's still a four out here. And um, yeah, that's equal to V. All of this is equal to V. We know what the maximum of V is, and it's very easy to see what the maximum is when we have uh, the complete the square like this. And that's because uh, the maximum of this function, there's a minus out front. So the bigger this gets, and this doesn't move, 4 doesn't move, uh, k is a constant, it doesn't move, we put, actually we don't know it's 10 yet, I'm sorry, uh, this doesn't, none of this moves, the only thing moves is this bracket here, it has an x in it, or a t uh, originally in it, uh, we can change it back with it, I'd love to change it back now, uh, t to the power of a half, um, this is the only thing that moves, and it, because it's something squared, the smallest something squared can get is 0, the smallest this will ever be is zero, and it, it'll get bigger and bigger forever. But then if we multiply it by a minus, the biggest it'll get is zero, and it'll go minus forever and ever. So if the biggest all this can ever get is when this is zero, let's just put them to zero, whether it's an x or a t, doesn't really matter. Um, so the biggest this can get is 4.5, and we now know it's equal to minus two, times uh, minus k squared over 16 plus 4. Just start equating this. Uh, divide both sides by two, uh, minus 2. Uh, put a line through that. That goes over minus 2. Uh, let's see. Take 4 from both sides. Uh, let's move over here. We'll get minus k squared over 16 is equal to... Uh, we'll take 4 from both sides here. Uh, this is a uh, minus 2.25 minus another four, uh, that's just uh, minus 6.25. Multiply both sides by 16, we get minus k squared is equal, uh, this time 16 is 100, or minus 100. Um, change both sides to that, that's what we got earlier. k squared is equal to 100, k is equal to 10. Same answer as before, except no differentiation this time. Okay, part B is uh, just one mark. Uh, they just ask you to verify that v equals zero when t equals one and t equals 16. So we just put it, put them in. v when t equals one is equal, I'm gonna do this wrong first, just to point something out. Uh, k times one to the power of a half, that's one. Minus two times uh, one is two, minus eight. We get k minus 10, uh, that's not zero. And that's when we should remember, oh yeah, we know what k is, k is 10. 10 minus 10 is zero, that's verified. Uh, to stop us doing that again, let's just change this k to a 10. And we would have 10 minus 10 equals zero, sorry, <laughs> equals zero, done. Uh, next one would be v, um, 
at t equals 16. Put that in, it's a little harder. That's 10 times 16 to the power of a half is 4. Minus 2 times 16, that's 32. Minus 8 is minus another 8, so that's minus 40. 40 minus 40 equals 0. That's that's part B verified. Uh, I t well, I'll, I'll explain in the next part why they did this. So uh, B part 2 is the, is the real question here. B part 1, verifying when is equal to 0, was trying to make you notice something. Um, I'm going to try and draw this. It might seem very hard to draw. Uh, and it is, it is quite difficult to draw. I guess you could remember it's sort of a quadratic. But importantly, what they told us in part 1, if we draw like V versus T, they told us in B part 1 that at, point, at time 1, this is 0. At time 16, it's 0. Uh, in part A, we found out the maximum gets is 4.5. And we didn't find the time, but we could go back and find it. It was something like, um, I can't remember, it's 100 divided by 16 or something. Let's call it uh, 6 or so, somewhere in the middle here. Um, and also, we could find when t is 0 quite easily. 0, 0, that's minus 8. That's down here somewhere. So we can roughly draw this. Looks something like that. As it happens, uh, it looks more like very steep and draw like that sort of uh, because of the it's a quadratic with a square root inside it. So you get this sort of uh, thing. Sorry, it doesn't go asymmetrically there, it goes down like that. Um, but the point here is in part two, they ask you to find the distance traveled. Uh, by this particle. Now what you should be thinking is integration. So I would expect a lot of students to just go integrate v with respect to t between 0 and 16, get an answer. That's going to be the wrong answer. They will give you marks out of 5, I don't know, maybe you get 2 out of 5 for that, maybe 3 out of 5 um, if you do it all correctly. Uh, but you're making a mistake here. You're going to find minus of this area because uh, it's on the bottom. And then you're going to find positive of this area. And doing this is going to add them together. So you're going to lose this. And you're going to lose some of this even. This much area of this one. So you're going to get the wrong answer. What you need to do is not this. This is uh, wrong. What you need to do to find the total distance travelled here. Is the integral of V dt. Between 0 and 1. And, and you're going to want to find the absolute value of that. And then you're going to want to find the integral of 1 to 16 of v dt. Um, you don't need to get the absolute value of this, but you could just think of always getting the absolute value if you want. Um, that's how we're going to answer this question. So let me, let me first, let's integrate this first. Find a general form. S is equal, uh, the integral of this is uh, add 1 onto this t. We get t 3 over 2. And then 10 divided by 3 over 2, which is uh, multiplied by 2 over 3, which is um, 20 over 3. Uh, let me just make a little more room. Uh, next term is the integral of minus 2t. That'll get us uh, t squared. And then uh, the minus 2 divided by 2 will get us just minus 1. And then the integral of minus 8 will get us minus 8t. And uh, I, I, this has uh, some constant. The constant doesn't matter because we're going to put in exact points. We have the numbers. Um, okay, so what is this uh, this exact this this number here? Let's let's do both of these separately. Um, this first one uh, we put in one and zero. Uh, put one into this, we get um, how how will I write this? Let's see. Let's write that again. One zero, v d t equals. Um, we put one in here. We we'll get one. We we'll just get twenty over three minus uh, 1 minus 8 and again the constant doesn't matter because we're putting numbers in and then we take away putting 0 in that's uh, minus a 0 minus a 0 and minus a 0 or plus a 0 plus 0 whatever they're all zeros uh, this gives us an exact answer of um, what's this minus 9 so 20 over 3 minus 27 over 3 that's 9 that's equal uh, minus 7 over 3 Remember, we don't want a minus. We want to know how much it's traveled. Um, not, the, not the fact that it's, uh, 
it's gone backwards. Um, here, maybe I should say that again. Remember this guy is going in a straight line. So what does this tell us? It tells us it started off going backwards quite fast and then slowed down and it uh, got to zero and then it started going forward and it, it went fast and it slowed down and then it got to zero. And I guess after this point, it'll probably go back again. So this distance, if we, if we did this integral, the thing I said was wrong, that would just get us this length from here to here. That's not what I want. I want the total distance traveled. So I want this length, which is uh, this number, seven over three, or minus seven over three, because it went backwards. And then I want um, this length all the way from zero to, all the way from uh, time one to time 16. So that's uh, what we do here. So yeah, we got a minus number. This, um, we want the absolute value. So we'll take uh, seven over three as our answer for the first integral. Uh, the second integral will be the integral between one and 16 uh, VDT. Uh, we put in, let's see, put in 16. It's gonna be a lot harder here. It's gonna be 20 over three. Let your calculator do most of this work. Uh, 16, uh, the square root of 16 is four, and four cubed is, uh, God, I don't know, 16 times uh, four is, does it really matter, 64, I think? Uh, we'll let a calculator do all this first. Then um, minus uh, 16 squared, yeah, 16 squared minus eight times 16, and uh, then we're gonna take away when we put one in. And that, that's actually this guy up here, so we don't have to do that again. So minus 20 over three, oops, running out of room here. Minus 20 over three plus one plus eight. Put all that into a calculator. Be careful about it, obviously. Uh, do it a couple of times, double check your work. Uh, but I get uh, 45 for this second one. So this first one, seven over three. This one, 45. We add them together, our final answer is, uh, 142 over three meters, or uh, put that into three significant figures, uh, 47.3 meters. Um, yeah, that, that's it, That's it. that was a tricky last part. Uh, I think a lot of students might not even have realized of this gap, because they didn't draw you this picture. Um, that's what part one, they were trying to hint at when uh, it, it must have crossed the zero point a couple of times. So. When in part two, they asked you to find the first 16 seconds from zero to 16, they were hoping you would go, hang on, if it crosses the zero point at one, that's something I need to pay attention to. Uh, the fact that it crosses the zero point at 16, I don't care about that. That's not in the, the time I'm interested in. But the fact that it crossed at one, I, I, I'm interested there. I better do zero to one separate. So you didn't have to know what it looked like. You could have just thought, oh, I better do it separate because it crossed that zero. Um, remember, you could do a hundred of these if you want, between zero and one, one and two, two and three. Break it up as much as you want. It, there'd be no point except when uh, something interesting happens, like crossing the equals like that. Okay, I hope, uh, I hope that helped you answer that question. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.